Buongiorno. <laughs> ok, so ok. Um, Yesterday, okay, we conclude uh, the lecture by giving the definition of critical points of the Dirichlet energy um, with value in into a closed manifold, namely a compact and without boundary manifold. So today, okay, I would like to devote um, uh, still, um, say, 10, 15 minutes uh, to this uh, part, uh, even if it is uh, a bit technical, but I think uh, that for people that uh, see this topic for the first time, it's quite important to see how uh, the constraint that uh, the solution, so the, the point belongs to, uh, takes value into a manifold. Um, as, so the concept of this fact into the Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay, so um, yesterday uh, we, uh, we, we gave this uh, definition. So we said that uh, U is a critical point uh, of the um, Dirichlet energy. And if and only if uh, uh, this quantity here, so we take uh, um, the projection, the orthogonal projection of compact supported perturbation in your solution, and uh, uh, you want the derivative of this quantity at epsilon goes to zero, when epsilon is zero, um, is zero. Okay, and uh, uh, what uh, we found, uh, so we, we, I recall some property of this uh, um, orthogonal projection, so um, some um, property that I said that you can see, for instance, in the lecture note by, lecture notes by Leon Simon. So we arrived to um, this um, uh, equation so saying that uh, the uh, um, orthogonal uh, projection the tangential projection of the Laplacian of you is equal to zero in the distributional sense maybe some of you can ask me but uh, this uh, equation here has a sense uh, in uh, a distributional sense uh, and the answer is yes because uh, uh, if uh, you assume that uh, uh, for instance so you assume that you U is uh, in W12 uh, uh, in uh, D. Huh? Uh, you have that Laplacian of U is in W minus 1 and uh, 2. And uh, um, if uh, you the, um, if uh, the manifold has suitable uh, uh, regularity, uh, satisfies suitable regularity assumption, you can prove that actually the composition of the projection PT with U, this part here, belongs to actually W12, so the product is actually a distribution. Okay, so in particular, uh, says that uh, if uh, U is a smooth uh, solution, this condition says that the Laplacian of U is perpendicular to your manifolds. Okay, and uh, um, now um, another property that uh, in one has to use in this uh, uh, context is uh, the following the fact that uh, your solution takes value into a manifold manifolds implies that uh, um, actually if you take uh, the uh, implies that actually uh, the gradient of u uh, the gradient of u belongs to uh, the tangent space at u uh, to any point and uh, in particular you have that uh, the gradient of u satisfy in the distributional sense this uh, um, equation that uh, I we i'm going to call a, a structure equation. No, it's a, a consequence on the fact that U takes value to uh, into a manifold. Okay, so let's try to uh, to rewrite okay this uh, uh, equation here huh, in a better way by using also this uh, property. Hmm? So how do you do this? So 
uh, you uh, okay you write okay that the laplacian of u is uh, okay by definition is the divergence of the gradient hmm? but now use the fact that the gradient is tangential to the manifold so it coincide with its uh, um, tangential projection and what you do you differentiate uh, you, uh, you apply the leibniz u rule uh, so this divergence is uh, exactly the gradient of this quantity multiplied by the gradient of u and uh, um, you have the, um, the the here yeah it appears that the tangential projection of the uh, your the laplacian which is zero hmm? and uh, so it remains only this term here huh? and these terms uh, um, i denote uh, in a different way so it's equal to uh, minus i i will explain you what is uh, the mean of this uh, notation minus a of u does um, nabla u nabla u and what is uh, a, this uh, quantity here this quantity here denotes uh, for any p uh, in the um, in the manifolds aop is just uh, the second fundamental form associated to the embedding of uh, the manifold to rm in particular uh, what is uh, uh, so this uh, um, what is this, this uh, second fundamental form is just uh, a quadratic form that uh, for any um, pairs of uh, uh, tangent vectors associate uh, a normal vector so um, it's not important that uh, this analytical analytical expression here but you just uh, recall that uh, um, it's just a, a, a form that associated to any uh, tangent tangent vector a normal vector hmm? and uh, um, this uh, equation uh, uh, minus Laplacian u equal to this one to this fact this quantity is called harmonic map equation the solution in this distributional sense of this equation are called weak harmonic maps I want just to um, so the, the presence uh, uh, of this term here uh, which is quadratic you will see with respect to the gradient uh, is a consequence of the fact that you takes value uh, into a manifold it's just a sort of uh, um, Lagrange multipliers in this uh, context okay so uh, uh, just uh, want uh, to make a, a remark in general you you find another um, expression of these fundamental forms i like to to present it in terms of this orthogonal uh, projection but in the literature you find uh, in general this definition namely if uh, um, uh, new one new n are smooth vector fields uh, spanning the norms normal space uh, uh, to uh, your uh, manifolds uh, you can express uh, the your um, uh, these quadratic forms uh, in terms of uh, these uh, vector fields and in particular mm, i want to in particular, if uh, uh, your manifold is an oriented hypersurface, so it's a manifold co-dimension one, so you have only one normal vector, you have this uh, simplified form and uh, you, your uh, equation becomes simply this one and it becomes even simpler huh? uh, in the case where the, the hypersurface is a sphere because in this case uh, the normal vector coincide with p huh? for any p on the sphere huh? and um, and, be, uh, and because of this uh, you have that this quantity here becomes uh, this simply equation so again uh, i want to stress that in this um, in this framework this quantity here can be seen as uh, a Fourier, a Fourier, sorry, a Lagrange multiplier um, associated to the constraint that uh, u takes value to a manifold. Okay. 
So now, um, okay, I don't want to, to see, okay, I skip this part. I just want now to pass to the no local case because be, before entering in the clue of the topic, so the regularity of such uh, critical points, I just want to mention that uh, um, when you consider a no local energy, so our model case uh, is uh, this, uh, this energy here defined uh, in R. And uh, again, uh, um, the critical points are points which belong to this fractional space H, H um, dot one over one half, where uh, this, which is the, the space of a function belonging to this one and takes in value uh, to, um, to the manifolds almost everywhere. And I recall you that uh, for, uh, for us, uh, this uh, H dot uh, one half is the homogeneous uh, fractional uh, Sobole space, and namely uh, it is uh, the, 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 I, the set of functions which are locally integrable and for which this energy is finite. Okay, so again, uh, okay, you, you uh, so this uh, I did, I forgot uh, to, to put again here the projection here uh, in order to compute a critical point of this energy, you do the same thing that uh, I described before. And you find that also in this uh, situation, um, critical point satisfy this uh, uh, new, uh, this, uh, um, fractional uh, um, equations, namely, in this case, I had that the um, one uh, over half uh, Laplacian of U is orthogonal to your um, to your manifolds. And another way to see that is uh, that in distributional sense, you had that uh, um, the uh, tangential projection of your fractional Laplacian is zero. Again, this uh, equation here has also a sense in distributional sense because you can prove that actually uh, the composition of a function u which belongs to this uh, space here uh, with uh, a smooth function, p, uh, smooth function, which is in this case pt, is uh, uh, you can prove that uh, actually this is uh, in H one of again, and this is uh, in H minus one half. So the product is actually a distribution. And uh, this equation is called alpha money map equation. Mm -hmm. And the solution of this are called weak harmonic, uh, uh, sorry, weak uh, harmonic map, uh, alpha harmonic max. And uh, just I want um, for the moment to mention how to rewrite uh, this uh, uh, harmonic uh, ma alpha harmonic map equation i have to say something the notion of alpha harmonic map um, has been introduced uh, uh, almost already 10 years ago in a joint paper with uh, Tristan Rivière. And uh, since then, there have been a lot, a lot of progress in development. And um, uh, so I present here the, the formulation of the equation, which is not the one that uh, we gave at the beginning uh, of this theory, but uh, um, this one, as you can find uh, in the, it was, um, uh, found uh, in a paper uh, by um, Van Samio and uh, Yannick Sira, and uh, uh, they show that actually an uh, alpha money map equation can be written in this way. So again, so you have Laplace and one over two of you is equal to, you have this quantity by multiplied by you. So this quantity is um, in some sense uh, uh, correspond uh, to uh, in the local case uh, to the nabla u to the power uh, to, to, to the power square and the, it is again a sort of Lagrange multiplier relative to the constraint that you belong to the sphere. 
And uh, okay, so I put here, since uh, you like exercises, uh, as Begonia said yesterday, so you can verify. So I put uh, the solution. I don't want to, um, to explain this, but uh, since in this case, uh, the, uh, the orthogonal and tangential projection are really nice, you can write explicitly. For instance, the uh, normal projection is just uh, the, uh, pro um, the the, the component of any vector phi, you just take the, uh, the component of V along the U direction. And uh, because of this, uh, you can really um, uh, test uh, your uh, the Laplacian one over two of U with a, a smooth function with compass support, you integrate and it's, uh, it's easy to see uh, that actually yeah, you had that Laplace on one over two is equal to this stuff here. So, but uh, I, as I told you, I'm going to give you the slides at the end of this course. So, so you find already the solution. Okay, so now, uh, so this was a, uh, really an overview huh, of uh, this uh, um, notion that are essential to understand what I'm going to uh, present now. And uh, some typical, uh, so once you, you have these uh, critical points, uh, uh, some typical analytical questions are, first of all, uh, one uh, can ask uh, what, uh, um, what happens if uh, we, um, we have a sequence of harmonic maps of alpha harmonic maps, which are whose energy is uh, bounded. Uh, is it true that uh, um, the weak limit of such, uh, uh, solu uh, of such critical points uh, is uh, still a, a, an harmonic map or an alpha harmonic map. And uh, what about also the regularity? Huh? So is it true that uh, a weak harmonic map is uh, continuous, smooth, analytical, and so on? And in this course, I'm going to focus on the regularity issue. I will give you maybe at the end some uh, um, references about um, the, uh, this, the issue of uh, convergence, the, the convergence issue, issues. Okay, so uh, let's start uh, uh, first of all with uh, uh, the regularity of harmonic max in 2D. Hmm? Okay, so I put here uh, some, oh, only some uh, names of people that uh, um, have uh, uh, that work on this subject uh, for a long time. And um, okay, so the uh, as uh, I write again uh, the the harmonic uh, uh, map uh, equation, uh, and um, and the, this system so. This part here is uh, bounded, and uh, this system, this system here, enters in the family of elliptic systems with quadratic growth. So, uh, or the, or namely, uh, systems of this type where the right hand side is a function depending on u and the gradient of u that satisfy this uh, uh, quadratic growth condition. And you see there is two here. The, the, the exponent in this uh, con uh, growth condition is two. And it, it, you will see that it plays a, an important role. Okay, so I want to start with a negative result. Uh, and so namely, um, it's not true that if you consider any uh, equation a uh, system of equation because uh, you have to remember that in our case u is not necessarily a scalar fun uh, function is a vectorial function mm -hmm. so uh, it's not true that in general if you consider any function f uh, satisfy suitable regularity assumption but it's not uh, uh, the main deal here but to satisfy this growth condition you find a smooth solution and actually um, uh, you can uh, find, uh, so you, you take uh, this simply, this simple equation, but uh, uh, even a this is a scalar equation. And uh, you find that uh, in this case, uh, you have, you can ex 
explicitly compute, compute the solution. And in particular, you add that uh, uh, this function here uh, is a distributional solution of this equation, but it is not bounded. And uh, I want to make uh, this remark, uh, this equation is uh, conformal invariant. Mm -hmm. However, it was shown by Fraze that uh, it is the Euler-Lagrange equation of a, a Lagrangian, which is not conformal invariant. And uh, why I say that? Because I'm going to, uh, to say something about um, about uh, about uh, uh, the Euler Lagrange equations related to conformal invariant uh, uh, Lagrangians. And actually, uh, this is the positive result. Uh, Riviera uh, showed in 2007 that actually, if you take uh, to any critical point of uh, finite energy of conformal invariant Lagrangian in 2D, and uh, under the assumption that such Lagrangians are coercive and uh, quadratic with respect to the gradient, these uh, critical points are C0 alpha, locally older continuous for any alpha. Once you have the older, older continuity, you can get higher regularity, namely you can prove that actually the solution are in CK minus one alpha, if the, 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 the manifold is in CK, and uh, even it is a C infinity if this, the manifold is the C infinity. In particular, in the case of the sphere, you get actually that. Uh, you will see that uh, the critical point of the Dirichlet energy with value into the sphere are actually C infinity. And uh, this bootstrap, uh, um, uh, the, fact the, the higher regularity can uh, uh, be obtained by techniques, uh, classical techniques in the context of elliptic quasi-linear equations. So I gave you, I wrote here a reference. Okay, so, um, so this was a general result, but uh, let's start with a particular result, because before the result uh, proved by Tristan, there were a lot, a lot of uh, work on uh, the subject, and uh, I would like to present uh, a, the proof uh, of the regularity of weak harmonic maps into a sphere. And this proof uh, was, um, is due by Frederic Lann, and you find uh, in his uh, nice book that I have here, and it's uh, a sort of Bible for me and for a lot of people working in this uh, topic. So I, um, okay, I rewrite uh, what does it mean again? Um, uh, to be a weak harmonic map means that, uh, as I told you, the, the Laplacian of U is orthogonal to uh, the sphere. What does it mean orthogonal? It means that it's parallel to U because U is correspond to the normal vector. And another way to write actually this, you can just say that the wedge between the Laplacian of U with U is equal to zero. It, always in the distributional sense. Maybe it's, uh, it's better to, to, when you, to write an uh, equation in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this form. And again, um, as I told you, another way, so we, we proved that before, that uh, another way to, um, uh, to, to reformulate uh, this equation, we, this one, so uh, this one is to say that minor Laplace of u is equal u uh, multiplied by the modulus of u to the power square, to the power two. Okay, so mm, let's uh, look at this equation. Mm. Uh, so um, you see that uh, in two dimension, this equation is uh, critical. What does it mean critical? Means that, uh, you see, if uh, you assume that uh, uh, u, is uh, in W12 means that uh, the uh, gradient of U is uh, in L2, right? And uh, moreover, you know, you have the information that uh, um, 
U is bounded, actually the modulus of U is equal to one, so U is bounded. So you see that the right hand side here of the equation is in L1, because you have the product of a function in L1 with a function in L infinity. And you know that uh, unfortunately L1 behave uh, very bad um, with respect to uh, in the frame, in the context of the calderon zygmunt um, theory because uh, unfortunately you cannot deduce uh, from the fact that uh, the laplacian of u is in l2 so you know that this is a classical so if a laplacian of u is in l2 this does not imply that uh, the action of u is in l2 so this does not imply that uh, this, the the uh, the action matrix is in l1 uh, this is uh, it's true for any p bigger than one, but it is not true for L1. So if it, it would be uh, true, this, uh, these things, uh, then uh, the, you are done because uh, this implied that U belongs to W21, which uh, embeds to W12. And then, uh, um, so, yeah, sorry, 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 is, um, the, uh, wait, sorry. It belongs that actually it is continuous and you are done. So C continue, then you have a C0 alpha and the, the, the C, so we have, you would have solved the problem. And uh, actually, I want, uh, I propose you, to, I want to mention a theorem uh, that uh, maybe uh, most of you knows, uh, know, uh, namely, uh, you have uh, uh, that uh, if, uh, you solve uh, this uh, Drishley problem here, huh? uh, where the uh, left hand the right hand side of the equation is a functional one. What you can um, you can get uh, is um, at maximum that the gradient of u is in L two infinity, and uh, the uh, the the norm the L two infinity norm of the gradient is majorized by the L one norm of f. And what is L2 infinity? L2 infinity is uh, what it is called uh, the weak L2 space. I, gave, I put here the definition just um, yeah, for completeness, but it's not important here for uh, the result and, um, and contains L2. So L2 is, a con is a smaller, uh, is smaller than uh, L2 infinity. So this means that uh, actually you cannot get in general L2. In general, you, this problem has not solution in W12. And uh, I decided uh, just uh, maybe um, uh, to, to give a proof, a deal of the proof. It's a nice exercise. There are several ways to prove this, but uh, um, I propose one. If you have other um, proposition, uh, it's, uh, you can let me know. So, but just to, to show you how in this, uh, some, uh, so what is behind this result. Okay, suppose, um, okay, first of all, uh, assume that for the moment that you have a solution of um, uh, Laplace uh, of this uh, equation in all R2. Okay, then uh, in the distributional sense, then uh, you know that uh, V is, uh, can, is the, can be represented by the, the convolution of your function F with the fundamental solution, right? And uh, in particular, you get that uh, the gradient of uh, the, the solution is again the convolution of uh, F with this kernel here. But uh, you see that uh, this is, e e sorry, this is, e e yes. Dime cuánto vale la norma de la derivada. I don't see, I don't, what? Hello? Hello? Entonces, no. Okay. Okay, I hear some voice. Okay. Yeah, I think. Entonces, yo, según por ahí, necesito que exista un intervalo de uno. Necesito un. un eh, eh, María, yeah. I hear some voice. Yeah. What is yeah. happening? 
Silence, but I don't know. I asked to unmute. Okay. So, no, I cannot. I cannot look at it. So, maybe Susan can. Please. So, silencing him. Okay. So, wait, Francesca. I go home. Wait. Okay. Okay. Um, you cannot, you cannot tell me. I cannot him. silence him. Yeah, I cannot Why? block him. I don't know. Suzanne, can you do it, please? Ask to unmute. But... Yeah, I don't know why, because yesterday I could, but uh, today I can. I did it. Yeah. I did it. Okay. Uh, you did it. Yeah, because you are uh, co, co host. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I want thank to you very much. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so let. Uh, um go on so i i said that uh, okay i started by considering the same problem in r2 then uh, so I, this is one solution huh? this solution and uh, um you have also that the gradient is the convolution f uh, with this kernel f in l1 uh, but this does not belong to uh, l2 but uh, you can uh, see that you can show that actually this kernel belongs to L2 uh, infinities, to the weak L2 space. And uh, you use uh, a young inequality huh, that it can be extended to this space. And uh, the convolution of L2 infinity with L1, it gives you a function which is still in L2 infinity. So in particular, you add that um, the gradient is in L2 infinity, but not in L2. And in particular, also, you have from this that uh, uh, delta, uh, so sorry, nabla v is in L p log uh, for any p less than two. Okay, so L1 is very bad in some sense. So, how you prove in the general case for the domain? Okay, so I, I, I show you uh, a proof. So, what I do, I um, what I do, I uh, first of all, I take uh, any function h. Hmm? Uh, so, I, um, okay, I take any function h, which is uh, uh, not in L2, but L21. Okay, what is L21? So, um, L21 is, uh, um, belongs to uh, the category of Lorentz spaces like L2 infinity. And um, you, if you, if you don't know about the Lorentz spaces, you can think about them as a refinement of LP spaces. And these spaces were, a bit, were introduced in the context of harmonic analysis, but then they got a great impact also to prove Sobolev embedding and regularity of the solution of PDs. So for the moment, uh, you, you don't care what is the definition, but just uh, to, um, uh, to tell you that uh, you have uh, this uh, sequence of inclusion, namely L2 is between L2 1 and L2 infinity, and the dual of uh, this space here is exactly this one, okay? And then uh, we see uh, why. Uh, I'm going to use this because what I do now is just I extend H outside the by putting uh, zero. So I just multiply H by the characteristic function of your disk. And what I do, I um, split your H uh, uh, tilde in uh, uh, two parts. So I, I use uh, what I, uh, is known, uh, well, the, the so-called Hodge decomposition of H tilde. So I write H tilde as the sum of a gradient of phi and nabla perp of psi. Mm? And um, where both of them, are in L21. You can do. And what is the key point? The key point is that so um, if you have a function phi, huh, sorry, a function um, phi such that the gradient of phi is in L21, then you 
you, you can prove that phi up to some constant is in null infinity, which is not true in the case uh, if uh, the gradient is in null two, it's not true that uh, phi is in null infinity, but uh, just in BMO. But for the moment, uh, it was it is just a remark, but just a remark that uh, this L2-1 space um, behaves uh, quite well. Uh, one uh, good behavior is this one. If you have that the gradient of a function is in L2-1, phi is in L infinity, okay? And uh, what I do uh, now, uh, I consider the harmonic extension of phi, which uh, this one, and the maximum principle says that also phi tilde is uh, bounded and its uh, infinity norm can be estimated by the L infinity norm on the boundary. And then uh, what you do, you, uh, you use the fact that uh, the duality between uh, L to infinity L to one. So I go directly uh, to this formula. I know that uh, the L to infinity norm of the gradient of V is the supremum of um, the, the integral of the gradient of u multiplied by any h in L21 whose norm is less than one. And I use uh, actually the fact that uh, L21, L2 the dual of L2 infinity is, is an L21. And uh, so uh, the idea here is actually to estimate this product for any h uh, like before. And uh, what, uh, what you do is just uh, write, okay, instead of H, you, you replace gradient of phi and the nabla per pop psi. You realize that this is zero, why? Because by integrating by part, uh, you use the fact that actually uh, the um, divergence of um, nabla per psi is zero and also use the fact that v is zero on the boundary. So this term is zero and uh, you remain uh, with um, this part here. And uh, what you do, you just uh, subtract uh, and uh, uh, add the gradient of the its harmonic, its harmonic extension. And uh, again, uh, this quantity here is zero because I use the fact that uh, actually um, here I use the fact that uh, delta phi is zero, uh, delta phi tilde is zero and use also that to be zero on the boundary. So this term uh, is zero, so it remains this, you integrate by part and uh, you end with the product of these two functions and use the fact that this is in L1, this is in L infinity. And uh, um, so you can majorize this by the L infinity norm of the difference with uh, the L1 norm of uh, the Laplacian of V, but uh, you can uh, estimate this by this uh, quantity here, which is less or equal than one. And so you get this. This is a, just a, a proof. Just uh, I wanted to show you uh, how to get such kind um, of estimates. Okay, so okay, so uh, let's come back to our problem. So you see that uh, okay, <laughs> when you, you look at our equation, okay, you you have a L one term on the right hand side, and, say, and then what I can do. So the idea of Elan, uh, so it was really a tricky proof because uh, he used uh, two ingredients. First of all, uh, a, what I call a conservation law. And uh, another ingredient was uh, a integrability by compensation result. So what he did it, so he um, identified in this, uh, into the equation, a quantity that, uh, um, enjoy uh, more uh, regularity hmm? uh, with, uh, than the, the more regularity than uh, the one that uh, one can expect it. Okay, so uh, what is the conservation law? So it was uh, shown by Shata that actually you can uh, uh, you can uh, prove that uh, uh, U is a weak harmonic map if and only if the divergence of this quantity is equal to zero. It's very easy to prove this uh, 
that if uh, everything is smooth, but you can prove also this, this equivalence also in the distributional sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, if U is a critical point, so it's a weak solution of this equation, then satisfy also this equation in a weak sense. So um, by observing this, uh, Elan uh, was able to rewrite actually the uh, this uh, right hand side as a sum of Jacobians. I will show you right away. So the the fact that uh, uh, this quantity is uh, divergent free implies that by implies that by using Poincaré lemma that you can find a matrix Bij in W one two D such that uh, the nabla perp of each component is equal to this. So maybe I I didn't. Uh, say before, but I just uh, recall you that the nabla perp of uh, something is uh, just uh, the rotation by pi over two of the gradient. Hmm? Is this uh, uh, <clears throat> is um, is uh, this is the definition? And uh, how you can uh, uh, rewrite uh, this uh, equation? Actually, uh, first of all, you use. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, property here. So you use the fact that, that um, actually u takes value into uh, the sphere. This means that uh, the gradient of u square is equal to zero because u is the modulus of u is identically equal to one. And uh, this um, uh, is another way to say that actually the gradient of u is uh, um, perpendicular. Sorry, the yeah, the gradient of u is perpendicular to u, so you have that uh, this quantity here is uh, is um, equal to zero, and uh, we plug uh, this information, which I told you before, it's a sort of structure uh, equation, into the harmonic uh, map equation. So what you do is just uh, so you write. Uh, the right hand side uh, co uh, component wise. And um, so you add this quantity here. I just rewrite uh, the fact this is exactly, um, this is uh, exactly ui, the gradient of u square. And what I do, I add this, I subtract simply something with, which is zero because uh, the scalar product of u with the gradient of u is zero. And then uh, you, you make appear here uh, the quantity which has a divergent, new, um, zero divergence. So I can uh, uh, use the, this fact here. And instead of this um, quantity potential here, I replace uh, this nabla per of Bij. So you see that uh, you can rewrite the uh, the right hand side in a special way so is a sum of jacobian a sum of jacobian because uh, you can uh, uh, see this part as uh, the determinant of the matrix so it's just uh, uh, dx uh, uj dy bij and here you i do uh, dy uj dx bij. So this quantity here is just a determinant of this matrix. And why it is special, this quantity? This is special because, uh, um, okay, there is uh, this uh, uh, fam famous, now fa um, this uh, um, uh, result uh, that uh, goes back uh, to uh, Wenty, uh, uh, he, he proved uh, the following inequality uh, when working on the context on uh, consuming curvature equations. So he proved that uh, if you had two function uh, A and B whose gradient uh, is in L2, and if you take uh, uh, the convolution of uh, the Jacobian, hmm, the Jacobian uh, uh, nabla per A multiplied by the gradient of U with uh, the fundamental solution of uh, the Laplace equation, you get that uh, this quantity is in null infinity in W12, and uh, the norm can be estimated by 
by, uh, by this quantity here. And why it is, it's a, a great result because, because, <clears throat> because uh, as I said, maybe I can, uh, sorry, maybe I, uh, no, right here. So why it is a, a great result? Because uh, as I said, uh, as if NABLA A and NABLA, uh, NABLA B are in L2, you have, um, uh, it's clear that the product of the two uh, is in L1, right? And uh, we have just seen that the convolution of um, uh, a function F uh, with the fundamental solution, the Laplace equation, first of all, cannot be in an infinity, a priori is only in BMO, huh? in BMO, so bounding mean oscillation uh, functions. And uh, moreover, the gradient is not in L2, but in L2 infinity. And you see that this inequality is an improvement of regularity of this quantity because it said that you can pass from BMO to L infinity and from L2 infinity to L2 for the gradient. Mm -hmm. I maybe if I have time at the end of the course, uh, there are several proof of this inequality. Uh, if I have time, I will uh, I will show you one proof of this. But um, how you can use this uh, this uh, inequality? Uh, there are uh, okay in the uh, during the years uh, there were, have been several improvement of uh, this result, and uh, you you can show, for instance, that if you have a solution of this uh, Dirichlet problem here. Huh? So you have minus Laplace on phi equal to uh, a Jacobian, um, and then, uh, and phi is equal to zero on the boundary, then you have uh, um, that uh, phi is bounded, the gradient of phi is in L2. You have also the, um, you have also that uh, the Hessian matrix of phi is in L1, and all these uh, norms can be estimated by the product of the two normal gradient of A by the gradient uh, of B. So there is a, a sort of improvement of the regularity of the solution, and this is uh, because uh, this Jacobian as, um, is a as a, is a, an algebraic uh, structure that has a, a really particular uh, property. In some sense, there is a sort of compensation on the terms uh, that you, you see better actually in the proof that permits you to get more regularity when you consider a solution such a problem. Once you have uh, the, the um, the continuity of uh, your solution, you can prove the C0 alpha. How do you do? Um, most of you are expert in elite TPDs. You, you know how to localize. You just one way to do that. You multiply both sides by cutoff function and uh, by integrating by part, you arrive uh, um, uh, to um, a formula of this type. And um, now uh, what you do, you um, you, ask, you you find you find uh, so uh, a r small enough, a radius small enough such that uh, the uh, the L two norm of uh, your uh, potential b is uh, the gradient of the potential b is small. And this is independently on your uh, point x zero, and uh, uh, once. Um, you add this, uh, you can, you see that if uh, this is less, uh, sorry, if it is less than epsilon zero gradient of U um, uh, square L2 BR X zero, what you do, you pass uh, this term on the left hand side, and then also this you write in a different way, but uh, uh, you can, uh, by iterating such inequality, you get a more, a more type estimate of this uh, form, namely, you find that uh, actually the supremum 
of uh, the, um, the, the, the altru norm of u in uh, these balls multiplied by this constant is finite. And this for any x0 a little bit far from, uh, uh, so you, you are far from the, the boundary. So for instance, uh, you, you take x0 in, uh, in a ball or radius one over two, and you take r sufficiently uh, small. But uh, this uh, relation here be, um, says that actually the gradient of u belongs to the more uh, campanato space and this implies that u is c0 alpha log okay and actually uh, the, in this case it's quite uh, easy to bootstrap into the equation because uh, once uh, you have uh, this uh, energy estimate here you plug uh, into the equation and you get that also the laplacian of you satisfy more type estimate and then you say and then and then uh, um, you can uh, use uh, some uh, estimate on Ritz potential. And this, there is a, a nice paper by Adams, which is called a note on Ritz potential. And this, um, the fact that the Laplacian of you satisfy this, you find that uh, uh, the gradient of you uh, is majorized by um, this quantity here. So why? Because uh, why? Because the gradient of u, you, you can uh, write as the convolution of 1 over x minus uh, 1, sorry, uh, yes, multiplied by a convolution of um, the plasion of u uh, in a ball or radius 1 over 2 plus uh, some constant c, which comes from the fact that uh, um, you are uh, thinking that uh, up to are you to you is is uh, determined by up to harmonic functions and um, and this uh, um, actually uh, this uh, the fact uh, so you look at uh, this uh, uh, this integral it's a convolution de la with this uh, uh, kernel here and if uh, this uh, delta u satisfy this more type estimates a result in Adam says actually that u is uh, uh, w1 lock uh, for any p, which is between the two and uh, this quantity here, two minus alpha, one minus alpha. But then, uh, then uh, this give you, you plug again the information into the equation, you get that delta u is in LR for r greater than one, the, and the equation becomes subcritical in the sense that uh, once you add that uh, delta u is in a lot for r bigger than one you apply caldero zygmo theory and get actually that u is in c infinity this is uh, okay in this case is uh, quite um, easy to get uh, the c infinity regularity okay so okay so i think i uh, uh, do you have time maria or not because yeah, I start in... Uh, you bit. started late, so you have... So five. I have five minutes, maybe, huh? Yes. A little bit, okay. So let me uh, conclude the lecture today by giving some remarks on this uh, Jacobian. As I said, that uh, uh, the Jacobian priori is only in L1, huh? but, and so the solution is mo at most, as I said, in BMO, and the gradient is in L2 infinity. However, due to this uh, special nature of this uh, quantity here, quadratic quantity, we have, uh, we, we have the possibility to pass from BMO to L infinity, L to infinity to L2. And uh, there is a sort of compensation, as I said, phenomena behind this uh, uh, structure, and um, which is also uh, due to the fact that, uh, and that this has been discovered later by Koi from Lyon Meyer Sams, that actually, if you look at them, the Jacobian, so it's uh, just uh, um, uh, the product of uh, nabla per A uh, multiplied by the gradient of B. So it's a product of uh, a vector field uh, whose curl, uh, curl uh, of gradient B is equal to zero, and this one is uh, of divergence uh, zero. So 
they show actually that uh, if um, once you have uh, a, um, the product to vector field, once is divergent free, the other one equal free, the product has a better regularity. And uh, actually, um, uh, they they show that uh, um, the product, uh, so a Jacobian, is in RD space. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the RD space? Uh, I, gave, I write down the, the definition, but um, there are several definitions of the spaces. You just uh, um, think uh, of the space, spaces uh, as um, uh, the biggest subspace of L1 for which you can use uh, the recipe, the receipt, which are valid in LP for P between city bigger than one. For instance, you can show that, uh, in particular, that uh, if, uh, sorry, if you have um, the, sorry, uh, if you add that uh, the Laplacian of, of phi is uh, in RD, hmm, which is, I said, that is a, a subset of a L1, in this case, you can conclude that actually the action matrix is uh, in L1 uh, a, and you can, um, estimate the L1 norm of the second derivatives by its Laplacian. And uh, if you can, so once you have this result, uh, you can, uh, you deduce uh, uh, right away that uh, the uh, gradient of phi uh, is in L2, 1, because, uh, sorry, you can prove that actually that uh, uh, if, uh, um, so you, you prove that, uh, um, sorry, I have, uh, so I have the gradient of phi is in L1. So this means that phi is in W to one, right? And this implies the gradient of phi is in W11. One, one, and this embed in L21 in this, Lorentz space and automatically this uh, uh, this uh, embe embe um, embedding implies that phi uh, is uh, L infinity. So, in some sense, you can prove uh, by using this uh, a posteriori result. Uh, you can uh, show that uh, by using uh, you can show right away that. Uh, the solution of this uh, problem here is in L infinity because. Uh, you have actually this property that I mentioned now that uh, since uh, this is in RD, your solution um, uh, is uh, as a gradient in L21, so automatically is in L infinity, also is continuous. And once you add this, that it is in L infinity, you can prove that also it is in, uh, you can uh, estimate the gradient of phi uh, clearly. Um, in terms of the, the if, if the gradient phi belongs to L2, one belongs also to uh, L2. So it is an alternative proof of this result. But as I said, this theorem um, got several improvements since the, um, the uh, Wenty result. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, I can stop here.